are going to be looking at place value. Last time we were looking at tenths and we will continue to do that and we are going to add on hundredths today. So to start thinking about this, let's put it in terms of something that we already understand like money. So these first few questions, we're just going to write down the amounts using a dollar sign and a decimal point. So if someone were to give you three dollar bills, five dimes, and one penny, how would we be able to write that? So in my text box, I'm gonna go ahead and put in, let's see, dollar sign. So we have $3 bills, three, right? And then five dimes and one penny would be how much money? Hopefully you said 51 cents. Okay, so we would write that like that, $3.51, right? How about this one down here? If I had three dimes and six pennies, well, my dollar sign in there. I know I have zero dollars, okay. If I have three dimes and six pennies, how much money is that? I should have said 36 cents, okay. So this is one way to write it. We could have also written it with the cent symbol, but for our purposes today, this is really gonna help us understand. So we have zero dollars and then we have 36 cents, okay. The next one, Start with our dollar sign. We have two dollar bills. So we have two dollars. And then we have seven dimes. So we would have two dollars and seventy cents. Okay. And then our last one, nine pennies, should be really easy to write, right? Nine cents. Um, but in keeping with our pattern up here, I'm going to say we have zero dollars and then we have nine cents. So what I want you to notice is a couple of things about these. First of all, our whole dollars were in the ones column, whether we had two dollars or whether we had zero, and then our change was behind it. Nine pennies, 70 cents, three dimes, six pennies, 36 cents. Okay, so we have different ways of saying it, we have different ways of representing it, but I want you to notice what we did here with using a dollar sign and a decimal point. So this one down here was easy in the fact that it was nine pennies, but it had lots of extra zeros to keep it in the right placeholder. So I wanna talk a little bit about what this means. So if we can think about money like this, the way we wrote our decimal points and our place values, that's really gonna help us in how uh, we are looking at decimals today. So when you get confused, try going back and thinking about money and see if that helps you understand what it is you're looking at. All right, so we talked about tenths last time being that first place value to the right of the decimal. So we had the holes, the decimal point, then we had tenths, and we're gonna add in hundreds. If we kept going, we would say thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands on all that. Uh, but we're gonna, gonna look at the first two today. Um, so if I were to read this and take off the thousands, I could say two and 45 hundredths. So if I were to look at this chart over here, hopefully you recognize this as a flat, 10 rows of 10 or 100 squares. If we were to think about this as one whole dollar, since we were talking about money on the last page, and we wanted to add in um, a picture of what some of that money might look like, like if we had 36 cents, we would just color in 36 of these squares. Let's see if I can put that on there for you. So we'd have, oops, don't move it, just color it. get our scribble okay so we'd have 10 20 30 and then we'd add 31 32 33 34 35 36 right and I think I should be able to make that a little bit bigger for you to be able to see that maybe it a little bit bigger um, and I don't have an iPad so that my um, coloring isn't as thorough as yours can be with your finger since I'm using the mouse. Um, but hopefully you understand that. So I've got 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So I've got 36 out of 100 of my little blocks filled in. So I could call that 
0, because I don't have any holes, and 36 hundredths. I could write it like a decimal like that. I could also say I have 36 out of 100 and make it into a fraction. Both of those things show the same um, amount on my picture. I have 36 out of 100 as a fraction, or I have 36 hundredths because we're saying that this whole flat is one whole. So either way, I have 36 hundredths as a decimal, or I have 36 out of 100 as a fraction. So what you're going to do is you're going to practice doing some of these things both ways. So let me show you what I mean. So number one here is already drawn for us. I see the word fraction. So we're calling this flat one whole. So if I look at how many are shaded, how many um, gray squares are shaded there? We could say there are 30 out of how many in the whole thing, in the whole flat? 100. Make my box a little bit bigger. So I could say this fraction would be 30 out of 100. If I'm going to put it into decimals, I'm going to say it is 30 hundredths, because remember the hundredths place is that second place value. Okay. Um, over here, this one, how many would we say we have colored in here? We have nine, right? Out of how many in the whole flat? 100. Okay, so now if we make that as a decimal, we don't want to um, forget. If I just said this, if I just said nine, that's a different value because that's actually nine tenths or nine groups of 10. Is this a whole group of 10? No, it's actually just nine out of 100. So I need to put a zero placeholder. I don't have any groups of 10. Remember we had tenths and then hundredths? I don't have any groups of 10 in this picture. Okay, so how about this one? Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So I have 65 of those colored in out of 100 in the whole. So as a fraction, I could call it 65 hundredths, 65 out of 100. As a decimal, I could call it 65 out of 100, 65 hundredths. So tenths, hundredths, okay? So down here at the bottom, let's see. If this says color in, oh, this is only one place value to the right. So we're not talking about hundredths here. However, let's see if that, yeah, I've got my text box. If I think about it like this, I could add an extra zero on the end, right? That doesn't change the, the meaning of the number. It's like saying 80 hundredths. Just like we did up here, we had 30 hundredths. We wouldn't necessarily need that zero either. So if I have 80 hundredths, I'm going to want to color in eight groups of 10. Let's see if I can get it a different color for us. Uh, one. Oh, where did it go? Come back. Let's see if we can get it on scribble. We would want to color in one, two, three, four groups of ten, five groups of ten, six groups of ten, seven groups of ten. Eight. So that would be the same as eight groups of ten, eight tenths, or let's see if I can change that color, make it stick out a little bit, or eighty out of a hundred. Okay. So now this one, if we look at the place value, it's over tenths, hundredths, two place values to the right. So that means it's not groups of ten anymore like this was. It's groups of hundreds. So each one of these is one. So if I want to color in four hundredths, I would just color in one. Whoops, grab it again. I would color in one, two, three, four. And now I only have, oh, it keeps going away. I only have four, one, two, three, 
four colored in. Okay, four hundredths. So the same thing for this one. Um, I want 53 of those colored in. So I'm going to color in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53. Okay. Now, did you notice when I was counting those 53, I started from the bottom? And the other uh, slide that I worked on, I counted um, a different way. Does it matter whether I counted the three on the top or the three on the bottom? Not really. Not really. Um, it, I would just not want them to be all spread out. You kind of want to keep them together. But it doesn't really matter whether I did these three on top or these three on the bottom. It would represent the same amount. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you practice um, drawing and naming some of these um, tenths and hundredths on your own. So you will find that assignment, you'll find a picture of your math journal, page 91, where you will be doing the exact same thing that we just did on these, whoops, on these six questions here. So you can come back to this to reference if you need to, and it should be a little easier for you to um, color these in, these in since you have iPads and you can use your finger as opposed to the cursor like I did. Um, if that's too complicated for you and you want to draw out a picture of it and um, take a picture of that, I would love to see that too. Whatever works for you.